praise and worship team come as we set the atmosphere as we enter into praise on this one. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm ready to feel blessed on today. Come on, we're blessed in this city. And blessed in the city of God. This is the morning worship. Hallelujah. The early praise.
with all my heart. I feel in my spirit. I know we did it last week, but I feel in my spirit. I love you, Lord. Today, I feel I love you, Lord. Don't you know you can't get enough of telling God how much you love him? How many love him? Sometimes we have to. God already knows it, but sometimes you have to tell your flesh. Because the Bible said that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. How many love God? How many love him? Oh, come on, hallelujah. Oh, he's the joy of my life. He's the river that flows through my soul. Oh, I feel the anointing. Come on, help me. Come on with this simple song it says, I love you. Come on, come on. Love you.
away from anything. When you read it, you'll find out that your search is over. I just pass unto you a spiritual relief deal. Take it daily with the drink of the word and the Lord will come a knocking. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man, man meaning human being, female, male, girl, boy, old, young, man, shall hear his voice and open the door, he will come in and sup with him. And he with us. So, on Thanksgiving, we open the door to the ones that we love and some we don't even know. And they suck with us. When they suck with you, what happens? You start sharing. Whatever your troubles may be, you tell someone. You don't keep it inside of you. You need some relief. What better person to have suck with you than the Lord Jesus Christ? But first, you have to recognize his voice. Because when you start seeking his kingdom and righteousness, the evil one gets angry. And he will attack you. So in order for you to know the Lord's verse, his voice, <laughs> You have to be in the word. Yeah. When Jesus told Ananias to administer to Saul, he wasn't Paul yet. He questioned the Lord, but he knew his voice. Okay? We have to know his voice. And to know his voice, you have to get into the word. You probably think you're not worthy. Romans 3 23 says, All have sinned. All of us, me, you, we've all sinned and have come short of the Lord. Romans 10 and 13 says, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want you to repeat after me, God. I am, a I am a sinner. I keep on sinning. I, keep on sinning. I, need, a I need a Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ I, welcome you I welcome you into my life, into my life. to be my Lord, be my Lord. And, my King. and my King. I will live for you, I will live for you. all the days of my life. All Amen. 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 If you have received Christ today, please contact us at info at mrhope.org or care at mrhope.org and either myself Elder Douglas Kid Terry, or my lovely wife, Lady Ruby Taylor Kid, we will administer to you on the phone. Well, like I said before, if you're not too far from Fairfield, in person. Amen. And now, are you ready for the word? Yeah. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. If you're ready for the word, hold on. Can you see tight? My colleague and friend of the cloth, Pastor Lee Henderson, yeah. is going to bring you into the light. We are all living in dark times. She is going to take your hand and lead you right into the light. With further ado, I want to present to you. My friend, Pastor May Henderson.
lift up the Savior on today. All praises and glory to God. Praise the Lord one more time. Stand with me and go with me to the 41st chapter 
of Isaiah. Isaiah 41, verses 10 through 13, reading from the New Living Translation. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. See all your angry enemies alive, confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who try to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. For I hold you by your right hand. Yeah. I, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital yeah. yeah. your God. And I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Go back to verse 10 one more time. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's where I want to put my focus for just a few minutes this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Our God is an awesome God. He is. Our God is a he wonderful is. God. Hallelujah. There is no other God Hallelujah. Oh, I stand in awe at who God is and what he's done and what he's doing and what he will do in and through the people of God. This parable talks about God encouraging and reassuring us not to be afraid of whatever situations and circumstances we find ourselves facing, but rather to trust in him. And he will in turn give us strength to overcome. Yes, this is a promise that God has given to us, his children, yes. because he is an all-sufficient God, who yes. an all-knowing God, yes. an all-seeing God, yes. and everywhere at the same time God, yes. an all-powerful God. Yes. He is more than enough. Yes. All by himself. Yes, yes he is. Hallelujah. And all God wants from us is for us to trust him and to take him yes. at his word. word. Are you ready to trust him? Yes. Are you ready to take him yes. at his word? Yes. Let me begin with a question this morning. What are you afraid of? No. What are you scared of? Don't try me. What are you scared of? Insects? Mice? Dogs, snakes, heights, slime. I'm afraid of heights and water. What in the world am I doing in California? Florida? What are you afraid of? Losing your health, your title, your position, losing your job, your political, economic, or social status. What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? Are you afraid of someone finding out? about your deep, dark secret. You know that thing that you have so carefully locked away in the closet of your mind that you've even tried to forget about yourself, afraid of public disclosure and the resulting embarrassment, possibly even rejection or abandonment. What did they find out about that? That I did that? That I was that? That I used to be that? Well, guess what? The Bible says when it's talking about all of us, and such were some of us. Yeah. Yeah. All of us are former somethings. Yeah. Yeah. It's no more than former sinners. Okay. Okay. See, I'm not just a sinner saved by grace. Oh, I have moved my designation from sinner to saint. Glory yeah. to God. Let me take a minute there. Do you know that many people, that's their problem? 
They're afraid of succeeding. Yeah. Uh, they won't step out in faith. They won't do what God has asked. Wow. They're afraid of failing. And yeah. then um, there's many others that are afraid of succeeding. Right. Don't be scared. No. Don't be scared. God blesses us abundantly. Yes. And he wants his people blessed on today. Yeah. Yeah. Are you afraid of moving out of your comfort zone? Yeah. Have you been doing what you do so long? Preaching to myself now. You've been doing what you do so long, but you're afraid to step up. You're afraid to step up. You're too worried about what people going to say and what people going to think. And I don't mean to be disrespectful, but you need to be worried about what God going to say. What God going to say. It's not people who calls you. It's not people who keeps you and sustains you. It's the Lord. We need to move out of our comfort zone. Step out in faith. Answer our call. Answer our commission. Do our assignment. Whatever that is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Walking in your destiny as you always say. Does that scare you this morning? No. Does it praise the Lord? Glory to God. I hope not. As humans, yes, even as new creation believers, we are daily faced with frightening situations. But 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, Therefore has no temptation taken you, but Amen. such as is common. Now everybody is going through something. Glory to God. I used to have a boss named Miss Miller. And we would come in and start complaining about my kids this. But Bill, and she wants us to us, baby, it's called life. That's and that's what the Bible says. In this life, people of God, we will have troubles. We will have trials. But God says he has made a way of escape. No matter what it is. No matter how small. How great. No matter how frivolous. How serious. According to the scriptures that we just read. The word of the Lord says don't be scared. He will help. Don't be scared. He will help you. Now that title is in the King's English. But there's another unofficial language called Southern Ebonics. Oh, Anybody ever heard of that? Oh, and that's the one that I want to use this morning. Don't be scared. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't be scared. Yeah. Help me out here. Turn to your name. And tell them, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Tell them again, don't be scared. My proposition this morning, God always helps us. Yes, yes. No matter what, no matter how, no matter when, God always helps his people. Yes. Yes. When you were growing up, did you get into childhood arguments like I did? I haven't forbid even juvenile fights and scraps at school and I didn't know how it was when we would be walking home from school and here come the neighborhood book. Yeah. Talking, to you, talking about what you had on. A worse yet, talking about your mama. They don't know what that meant. For us back in the day, you don't remember how we taught each other. Don't be scared of her, girl. Don't be scared of him. You fellas would say, I'll help you. If her old friends try to jump in it, I got your back. But fellas, you know how you would encourage your friends. It's okay. If his old partners come and try to help him, we got your back, brother. They've got to get past us first. Well, guess what? There's somebody with the devil, and that enemy's got to get past before they can get to us. They got to get past God. And he said, Don't be scared. I'll help you. Don't be scared. I'll help you. For me, that was a lot of pounds, Lord have mercy, and a lot of years ago. I was barely a hundred pounds. I know you don't believe it, but it was. I was barely a hundred pounds soaking wet. And the biggest thing on me was my mouth. It was just as big thing as it is now. The biggest thing on me was my mouth. But I had two big sisters. Rose and Barbara. Rose was nicknamed Mighty Mouse. 
She was quiet. She wouldn't say a word, but she would beat the stuff inside of me. <laughs> that was Barbara, my older sister. Barbara was a Jill of all trades. She could do everything and anything. She could cook, she could clean, she could play sports, hunt, fish. She could work on cars, build houses, do electrical and plumbing work without a day of training. She had the natural gift of engineering. She could watch somebody do something and then go and do it. I had my sisters, you name it, she could do it. And you guessed it, she could fight too. <laughs> it didn't take her many licks either. My sisters didn't slap. They didn't right. fight with open hands. They right. fought up their fists and send you packing. Those girls fought with their fists. My dad used to tease Barbara and tell her that she could whoop a man on the switch and send him home crying to his mom. <laughs> Rose didn't talk much, but she would slap the fire out of you. She would beat the stuff out of you. Barbara and Rose were some tough sisters. And trust me, I never got into an argument or a fight that they couldn't get me out of. <laughs> Much more that I had confidence in my sister's ability to protect and rescue and help me. As believers, we must be fully confident that God will protect us. He will provide for and deliver us from any and all of our circumstances and situations. Yes, even in these current chaotic and struggling times, don't be scared. He will help you. He will help you. God gives us several assurances in this verse that should help us to not be afraid. Number one, he is with you. He is with you. Let's go to the text. He gives us several assurances. The first one being that he is with you. And he also says in Hebrews 13, 5, that I will never leave you. Not for yeah. We can count on it. You will never leave us. Yeah. Friends may leave us. Mm -hmm. Parents, siblings, employers may fire us. Yeah. <laughs> Neighbors may shun us. But God, but God will never leave us. He says in Isaiah 43 2, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Yeah. You won't drown. Yeah. When you pass through the fire, you won't go back. Glory to God. He will be with you. And Matthew 28 20 declares, I am with you always. God is present with us always. And the song says, He walks with me and He talks with me and He tells me that I am His own. And the joy we share as we tarry, no other, no other. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. It's a joy to know that God is present with us. Yes. Trust me, he's right there by his side. He is with you. He is with you because he is in you. Yes. Oh, the spirit of the living God lives, wells, rules, resides in us. He is with you. Yes. Not only is he with you, but he is also your God. He is your God. He is with you. And he is your God. He's just not a God. Not just some God. Not just any God. He's not just somebody's God. He's not just anybody's God. He's your God. He's your God. He's our God. He's my God. He is your God. He is the one, the true and the living God. He's the one that stood out on nothing and spoke and said, let that be, and there was. He's the one that said, light be, and the lights came on. He's the one that hung the stars and the moon, created the universe, gave life and breath to all of that being, and it's still there. Because God is a God. Hallelujah. 
strong God. He's a good God. He is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 30, 22 says, you will be my people and I will be your God. That's a promise. And God is promises are sure. He's not slack as some is concerning his promises. He will keep glory to God. He reigns. He reigns. He's a good. Bless his name. People of God. Give him glory. Hallelujah, he's worthy. Yes. And he reigns yes. above all Whoa. and over all. He reigns over us. He made us. He created us. And even when we decided to disobey and go our own way, he brought us back yes. with coins of the love. Yes. And not only did he bring us back, he brought us back yes. with the precious blood of his son Jesus. But you know, God paid a ransom to save us from the empty, desolate lives of sin that we had inherited from Daddy Adam and Mama Eve. Yeah. Uh, we were on our way to hell on the one-way road with no opportunity to you turn. Yeah, yeah. But God, God paid the price. And it wasn't just any old ransom. It was a steep price to pay. Yeah. Salvation might have been free to us, people of God, but it cost God his only begotten son. And if you will, by creation and by redemption, yes. if you have confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus yes. and believed in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, yes. and you trust in his finished yes. work yes. on Calvary alone yes. for your redemption, yes. then he is, he is, he is your God. Yes. He is with you. Yes. He is your God. And he will strengthen you. Yes, he will. He will strengthen. Anybody need strength today? Oh, I know I need the Lord's strength. I know that in order to stand and give a word, just to be in his presence, I need his strength on today. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Have you not read back in the 40th chapter of Isaiah? That the everlasting God doesn't ever lose strength or go with. He doesn't get tired. I get tired, but God doesn't get tired. Yes. I run out of stuff to do, but the Lord doesn't. Yes. Oh, I get weary, but He does not get weary. Yes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. yes. He has strength, and He will strengthen you. He gives power to the faint and to those that have no might. When I get at my lowest point, he gives me strength. Have you ever been what you thought was the end of your rope? Yeah. Oh, and then God threw you another rope. Glory oh, to God. Oh, I say all the time, uh, I give testimony about one time I had a home invasion robbery. Glory to God. And God set me up to move me from one location to another in the ministry with that home invasion robbery. And when those two little old devils kicked my door in and came in with sawed off shotguns, he pointed those guns at me, and I was cool as a cucumber, glory to God. He strengthened me. He strengthened me. I had a phone in my hand, and when they got to my door, they had, I heard them all over other parts of the house, knocking stuff over, tearing stuff up. And I had gone in my room and locked the door and called 911, and I had the dispatch on the line. And I laid the phone down beside me, and one of them yanked the ski mask on, grabbed the phone, he said, oh man, she called the police, shoot her. And I said, oh, can't God, he didn't want to get me out of this in a minute. But he strengthened me. He's, now, I'm going to tell you that I didn't fall apart after the ball. I'm not going to tell you that my knees or my pocket, that I got sick in the whole night. Yes, he will. He will strengthen 
time. Yeah. Right you. now, we live in a troublesome world. Yeah. A world that demands that we have strength, even for everyday living. Yeah. Hmm, can't go to the grocery store without being concerned about who's in there and what they got. Well, we don't really have to. You can't even go to school without worrying about something crazy. You can't drive on the freeway. Right. Come on, I thank God I'm still driving because somebody yesterday, I know these crazy people out here going to make me stop driving and get, get somebody else to show me. But they drive like they're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Just out of control. Yeah. Speeding and weaving in and out of traffic yeah. and disrespect. We were coming across the street and we had to hurry up. They come across the street so we wouldn't get run over because people don't care. They don't care. But God is with us. So how does he strengthen us? Well, I'm glad you asked. He does so by the word of God, by our personal study and private fellowship with him. We pray about everything. We worry about nothing. He does so by hearing the word by the preaching and teaching of God's holy word. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for Bishop Sean Teal. I thank God for the word. I thank God for having the best of the best to keep the word. It leads no back to our knowledge. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God through worship and prayer, both personal and corporate. We build ourselves up in our most holy faith, according to Jude 20. We are strengthened by fellowship with one another, like logs on the fire. Anybody got fireplace? Now you know, if you can put one or two logs on that, it'd burn a little bit. But the more logs yeah. that you put, the hotter the fire, the warmer the heat, the brighter the glow. And that's how we must be, by fellowshipping with one another like logs on a fire to stoke the fire to keep it burning. Keep the fire burning. Don't let it go out. Encourage somebody. You see somebody going through? Encourage them. And don't just encourage them. Let us encourage ourselves. Let us be like David who encouraged himself. Who said, I'm going to feel it. He started out feeling downcast. But before the end of the passage, he was praising God. I don't know about you. I start out some prayers and I'm just bold and going, oh Lord, and, and then I come to myself. Ooh, I come to myself that God, we got the victory. The battle has been fought. Hallelujah. And the victory has been won. Glory, glory to his name. We are strengthened and we are encouraged by fellowship one with another. By reading and studying the word of God and hiding it in our hearts. By praying and having a prayer life and regularly talking to God. By loving and praying and connecting and serving. Glory to God. You are my strength, O oh God. Strength like no other. Yeah. Reaches to me. Yeah. And to you. And to you. And to you. And to you. And to all of God's children. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, when I am weak, then I am strong. When you are weak, he will strengthen you. Yeah, thank you. When you're tired, thank you, Lord. he'll strengthen you. Yeah. He'll rejuvenate you. He'll give you more energy. He will, in the, when you're sick, yeah. he will strengthen you. Oh, yes, when the doctors have given up hope, yeah. When they said it wasn't nothing else they could do, he will strengthen you. God has the last word. He will. When you bereave, I don't know about you, but I've lost a lot of loved ones. Oh, and when you bereave, when you feel like everybody you know has gone on to glory, if that's where they were going, or has left you, he will strengthen you. Yes, when you're lonely, you know, we don't ever have to be lonely, even when we're alone. We're not, we're not, we don't have to be lonely because we're not really alone. Because he is always with us. Hallelujah. He will strengthen you. Whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation, don't be scared. He'll help you. He is with you. He is your God. He will strengthen you and he will help you. Anybody need some help? 
to those who have no might, he gives strength. According to Isaiah 40, 28, and 29. They began to encourage themselves in the war aftermath. Every man to his name. Encourage somebody yeah. today. Yeah. Encourage yourself today. Yeah. Don't be discouraged. God, by his prophet Isaiah, revealed the reality of the divine presence in the midst of our God. In the midst of even God's judgment that comes upon the wicked, he reminded them of how God had chosen them to be a peculiar people. And he promises that nothing, nothing, nothing can assault or torment them. And everyone that opposes them will be defeated. These promises of love, people of God, extend to the poor and the needy today. And they extend to us as well. God was holding their hand. Uh, uh, Elder said, uh, 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 we'll give you a hand. We'll put your hand in God's hand. That's what we'll do. We'll put your hand in a hand that can really uphold you. That means that they are standing with God. He is by your side. He is standing with you. Psalm 16 11 says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures evermore. I'm not a hooper. I told the young man, I said, I don't want you to be told the other boy. But I'm not a hooper. Um, he's not you, you guys listen to me on the national prep. Now, sometimes I do get excited and holler and spit. I may not hoop, but I will holler and spit. And I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness yeah. of the Lord, yeah. with all these done for me, I get excited. I get a little high on I don't get spitting. I can say, glory to God, somebody. I can give him glory for how good he is. Yeah. You remember the opening story about my sisters? Well, I don't fight like I used to. My battles are not physical anymore. For the world, Ready, please, parent. 
Thank you. 